this is the equipment that you're going to need. So um, you're going to need a coke cane or an aluminium cane, a drinks cane. So that's that. You're going to need a sturdy pair of scissors, which uh, you use to cut up the coke cane. You're going to need something with a sharp point on it. I use a compass. Now the reason I use a compass is because the actual point is uh, engineered quite well and it's kind of a nice round point. A compass. You're going to need sharp knives. I use scalpels but you can use Stanley type knives. Uh, you're going to need gaffer tape or duct tape. Now this is important because if you take the gaffer tape or the duct tape if you hold it up to the light, cut a piece off, hold it up to the light and see if the light shines through it. It's kind of got to be pretty much light time. So if lots of light passes through the duct tape, it's not going to be that good. You're going to need uh, either sellotape or masking tape. You're going to need a ruler. And you're going to need fine, fine sandpaper or emery cloth, which is better. And then the last thing kind of quite wide tissue paper. Uh, that's basically the equipment you're going to need. That's what you're going to need to um, make the box and get the paper in the box and make pinhole pictures. Making the lens. To make the lens you make it out of a coke can. So with a big sturdy scissor cut the coke can up. Be careful because it's obviously got sharp edges. need your cut out pieces of can and some emery cloth. What you'd normally do is rub the emery cloth on the metal and the idea is you Take some of the reflectancy, reflectancy off of the can, and that helps with forming the picture. But the other thing you're doing is making the metal actually thinner. I mean, it's marginal, but any little bit is going to make a slight difference. Being careful of the sharp edges. Now 
these are the kind of finer details. These kind of these are little tweaks that help the image form quite clearly and quite crisply. Try and get rid of some of the curl in the metal, and then form the hole. Now, a hole can be tiny, or a hole can be big. You can experiment with different size holes, but generally, if you go for a, a small hole with this camera, it's going to kind of work out well. So, just use your compass or a needle or anything, and just poke a hole through the metal. Now, forcing that through. You're going to have a bird edge, we'll go into that in a second. So that bird edge needs to now be rubbed off as well. So rub the metal down a little bit more. And that should give you a nice hole. Now, if you were to look for look for a magnifying glass or some sort of magnification the hole still wouldn't be particularly round so put the needle in again in the hole and just twiddle it in the hole both sides try not to make the hole bigger just making it kind of look round and then if you lift that up and have a look at that hole you hopefully get to see if you use a magnifier it's much better get the hole as round as possible because it does make a big difference. That see that there's a little tiny pin on the middle. The um forcing the pin or the sharp point through the metal and cleaning it up is a kind of an explanation of, as to why you do that. So imagine your, your metal, so this is your metal blown up, so kind of metal's got a thickness, so your coke can will be like I don't know, a quarter of a millimetre thick. When you push the pin through, you're going to get bird edges. So when you do that to your metal, in the same way as you do with the cardboard, you get this bird edge. Now, imagine the light has to pass through the hole and come out the other side. Now, the cleaner it passes through the hole, the cleaner it forms the image on the other side. So imagine if the light's passing through the back of there, it's going to be hitting those bird edges. So the light travels in part straight lines, and if it hits those bird edges, it's not going to end up forming an image correctly. It will diffract off of the sharp edges, and it will form a blurred image. So, as I say, the reason for rubbing it down and making it thinner is you get rid of those bird edges. And again, remember, we put the pin through, and we formed a kind of a neat hole. So the more you do that, the more you rub that down, Clean it up, the nicer and rounder that hole is. So the light's going to be able to pass through that hole in straight lines, forming an image correctly on the inside of the box. So, and again, even at this angle, if the light's coming in straight lines, if the metal's thicker, it's going to bounce off and diffract off the edge of the metal. So, the thinner the metal is, the more efficiently the light's going to pass through the hole. So the, the, the cleaner that hole is, the thinner that metal is, the more the light is going to fall correctly on the opposite side. The box. Um, these are photo paper, photocopy paper boxes. Now they come in kind of different types where I work. They, we have different varieties of paper. Now you've got to look out for these boxes if you're doing this. Uh, these boxes are kind of are good in that, as you can see, they're sealed all the way round. A lot of the boxes have a, a gap up there. If you've got those type of boxes, they're not, not the right kind of type. You need a box with the ends that's solid. The side, if you, if you can get it, needs to be solid, so if there's some sort of dividing gap there as well in the construction of the box, that's not going to work. So you need a kind of a really basic box with no gaps running up the sides, because it's got to be light proof. So one of these types of boxes is absolutely perfect for it. So, cutting the box up. Glasses, eh? um, right, let's remember how we do it now. 
I use the lid as a guideline to where I cut the boxes. So my boxes are going to be the width of this box. So I use the lid to mark the box. So that's going to be the depth of our camera. Using your scalpel, just being careful, you then cut that section out. So that's one section of it. And then repeat the same process at the other end of the box. Now the depth for the camera, this depth here, is quite important. You can make, oh, you're always going to use the ruler and do it that way. That's kind of about the, the shallowest I'd go for, and that would probably be about five centimetres. So about five centimetres is the shallowest. This is this is still kind of a good box. But the, the deeper the box is, it kind of it affects the image and also affects the exposure time. This depth gives you a kind of a decent exposure time, it's not too long, it's not too short. So again, doing this, cut the box again. Really you shouldn't be cutting towards yourself, but um, yeah, so consider that. Use a sharp knife rather than a blunt one like I've got. So now you've got two sections. In one of the sections, cut into the bottom of the box, clear a little bit. The reason is you got to close that together a little bit like that, and that is going to form slightly smaller space to do that with. So now your cam camera is coming together. There's a little bit of overhang there, which there is. I'm going to trim that off. And there's kind of your basic construct. I would give gap of tape along the length of the bottom of the box. we need to do is make the box a little bit sturdier so we will be using a, a staple gun which I didn't include in the list earlier so with the staple gun staple the box at both sides and then also using a bit of gaffer tape tape over those edges next stage is really important. Now we've got to seal the corners. So using gaffer tape, 
tape over the corners. These little corners they leak light, so this needs to be done carefully. Tape over there. Tape over there. And done like that. So the corners at the bottom of the box at the minute, they're nicely done. So now we've got to do is do the lid. So get the lid and get your camera, that you, part of your camera that you've got already. Sit that in the box there. So you've got half of your lid already made. So that goes in there like that. And then uh, you need to mark, I'll do this with a pair of scissors or something similar. Mark where the lid's going to sit. This is going to be bent, so score that. Score it up the sides. And then, once you've done that, you've got, you've got to form an, a, a, the rest of the lid, so cut. So it's nice and tight, it needs to be snug, so I'm going to cut a little bit off there, a little bit off there, a little bit off there. It goes on there like that, and then you can see that it folds over and wraps around. So again, fold it over and wrap it around like that. At this stage, I would probably tape it. So you know, it's a nice precise lid. Get the other end nice and tight. It's quite snug. Staple gun, give the lid a bit of strength. So there's your lid. So, again, with the lid, the same as the camera earlier on, you need to make your corners nice and light proof. Take over the corner.
the lid. This one's got slightly overhanging edges, so I'm just going to just tighten that up. Some of this in. And where the staples are coming from, I'm just going to put some tape on the staples. Catching the fingers on the, on the sharp edges. Same so here, end. And that is almost your camera. So now it fits on top. Now I always, when you make these lids, they tend to fit on one way better than another. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. So once you find the right way, and you sure your camera's okay, I put on the front that it is the actual front. So that's the front. The front. So now the lens. The lens, remember, we rub down with emery cloth or sandpaper. This has now got to go on the front of the camera. So we have to make a little hole. It has to go in the centre of the camera so we give ourselves a rough guide where the centre is. And we're going to cut a smaller hole in that area there. So using your scalpel, and again, use a sharp one rather than a blunt one. Now goes over the top there, so I'll give it a gaff tape. Tape that lens onto the box. As I was saying earlier on, if you use different type holes, it gives you a different effect. So you can experiment, you can swap lenses around, uh, muck about with it, and see the different effect of a smaller hole or a larger hole, how it affects the exposure time. And also how it affects the quality of the image. The smaller and the cleaner the hole, the sharper the image, but it's going to extend the exposure time. These cameras in broad daylight, if you've kind of got a relatively small hole, are going to give you exposure times of around about a minute. And that's your camera. Right, so I'll just go over the, the, the issue with the paper again. So that's it, that's our camera. So then the rest of the process is now done in the dark room under red light. So you take the camera into the dark room and you load the camera in the red light in the dark room. So remember, oh, you just get your photographic paper. You've got one side which will be shiny, which is the side with emulsion on, where all the real action happens. And the other side, the back, is, the, is, a, is a flat matte surface. When you're working in big groups, put your name on the back. So write your name along the very edge of the paper so you can identify it because we may all take similar things. So put your initials or your name, write that on the back. And as I said earlier on, you get your tape, you cut it round in a circle to make form it into a kind of a double sided effect. Stick that on the back. Like that, so this is your shiny side, this is your tape side with your initials or something on. You take the lid off, and this is in the dark room, there's your lens. You put your paper now, if you're doing portraits, you might want to go upright, if you're doing landscapes, you might want to go horizontal. So you put that in the centre opposite where the lens is. So that fits in there, press it down, and it sits in the box. I don't know if you can see that. But that sits in the box like that, so the shiny side faces the lens. And then put in the dark one more piece. The tissue paper, you cut yourself a piece of tissue paper. The tissue paper goes on top. This acts as a liner to prevent more light, any light coming in. So remember the front of the box is where the lens is. You stick that on there like that, and that helps to make it light tight. Once that's done, 
when you're in the dark room, you need a bit, bit more tape. This piece of tape's your shutter. Bend the tape over so you've got a bit that doesn't stick. That goes over your lens. So now your paper's loaded, your lens is covered, your box is sealed, you take that out. You cannot hold it, you have to put it down on the surface, you have to leave it be and point this towards something that's interesting, it works really well with kind of things that are kind of contrast. This is Joe, my cameraman, he's going to give me a hand with the next section. So Joe's going to take the first picture in direct sunlight. places the camera down, peels the tape off and he quickly gets into position and he sits down in front of the camera. Now because it's direct sunlight he probably has to do a short exposure of about 30 seconds. So he sits still as he can for 30 seconds and he gets back and he places the, ta the tape back on the camera. That'll do Joe. Tape goes back on the camera quickly, seals the lens again, shows the lens, that's it, it's done, and it's ready to go back into the dark room. Now that light, as you can see, because of the shadow, is direct light. If it does it in shadier light, over here, Joe, it's the same process, this is a completely different sort of light, and because of the difference in the light, again, he sits down, as you can see, there's no shadows, this light's a lot darker, so this light would probably require sort of 45 seconds to 60 seconds. So if it's in shaded light, you can have longer exposure times. So again, he, he waits for the 60 seconds and then puts the tape back on. Right, so you take your pictures and you'll, you'll see when you process your pictures um, they're going to come out as, as negatives so there'll be negatives of what you see and they'll be black and white because it's black and white paper uh, you've got two options with the negative pictures you can make sandwich prints and turn them into positives and if your teachers know how to do that that's, that's a good technique that, that's good because the, the paper that you use takes up some kind of a texture and the images appear to become fairly fuzzy but more and more people like to take the pictures, the negative images, put them on a flatbed scanner and scan the images. Now when you scan the images, scan the images at a quite high DPI. So scan them at, say, I don't know, 600 DPI or higher. Uh, and once you've scanned them in Photoshop, then sharpen them up and then use the commands um, image, adjustments, invert. And that will turn your negative image into a positive image. And then once you've got that image and it's 600 dpi, you can resize it up to A3 or A4 and then again resize the A3 or A4 picture at say 150 dpi and you'll get a lovely pinhole picture and it's a really kind of spectacular technique. But if you can also experience the kind of contact print version in the dark room because it gives you a different effects and both effects kind of need to be looked at.